Hello, I'm Jeff Bickle, a level design student at the Guildhall at SMU, and this video series will show you how to use Matinee to create linear looping and rotational movement, how to affect lighting, and in the end we'll be creating a brief cutscene. For these videos I'll be using the May 2011 build of the UDK, and I will be assuming you're already familiar with the basic Matinee interface. If not, my partner Devin has created a video tutorial, a uh, link to which will be in the description. Okay, so let's get started. The very first thing I want to do is create a secret door using these two wall panels right here. I've gone ahead and added them. The one that will not be animating, I've added as a static mesh. And the one that will be ad animating, I've added as an interp actor. To add something as an interp actor instead of a static mesh, when you right click to add, select add interp actor. If you've already added it as a static mesh, you can easily convert it by right-clicking on it, going down here to convert, and converting it to a mover. Before we animate, we want to select the object, open up the properties by hitting F4, and ensure that the physics is set to phys underscore interpolating. Uh, if you've added it as an interp actor or you've converted it to a mover, it should be set correctly, but it never hurts to double check. Okay, so let's animate it. With the item selected, we go into our Kismet, which I already have open. We right click and we select New Matinee. And then we'll double click to go into the Matinee, and we'll add ourselves a new group. A uh, new empty group is fine. We'll call it secret door. Right click on that and select add new movement track. Now our first keyframe is added for us. So the first thing we want to do is for this wall to slide back and then we want it to slide to the right to clear this or to go behind this other wall. So the first thing we need to do is have it go back. So this animation I'll say should take about one and a half seconds. So I select the time slider over here and I move it to one and a half seconds. And then after the time slider has been moved I go over here and I move this back to clear that wall. I'll go over here and click on this track right here uh, and hit enter to add a keyframe. If you don't click on this track first, uh, you won't be able to add a keyframe. And then uh, the next thing we wanted to do is slide behind this other wall. We don't want this part of the animation to take as long, so we'll go over here to two and a half seconds. Just slide it right back there, select this track again, and hit enter. Now that's good we'll make sure. We'll go back to the beginning, we'll hit play, we'll see it slide back and across. So that looks good, but the end of this animation set all the way out here at five seconds and we can just go ahead and move that back to about the two and a half second mark so there's not uh, extra fluff at the end of the animation. It won't hurt anything but it's better to keep it clean. So that looks good. So we have ourselves an animating sliding door, but there's no way to get it to happen in game yet. So what I've done is I've added trigger volume directly in front of the door, and we'll use this to trigger. So with the trigger volume selected in Kismet, we're going to right click, we're going to do new event using the trigger volume, and whenever the player touches it. Then once that node's in, we simply connect touched to play, and this is all hooked up. So to see it in action, I'll right click and I'll play from here. And then I just walk up to this door. It will slide back and clear. And uh, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, turn on the next one and I'll go ahead and show you how to do a looping movement and a toggleable switch. Thank you for watching.